Come on up. He's coming from the back. Welcome you to Philadelphia, the city of love. I'll show you. Would you like my key? Perhaps? No, it's not to my room. What were you thinking? There are three friends in life. A faithful wife, an old dog, and ready money. And I applaud all of you for coming to Philadelphia to learn more about money. Because nothing but money is sweeter than honey. And may I give you some advice? Always invest in Ireland. Their capital is always doubling. <laughs> so, as you know, as one of the 55 members who signed the Declaration of Independence at Independence Hall, and also one of 39, a fewer number, who signed the Constitution of the United States, let us now test your ability to know of these founding documents. Fill in the blank. We hold these truths to be incorrect. Sacred and undeniable is what Thomas Jefferson wrote. I, being a rational scientist and rejecting religious superstition, took my pen in Pennsylvania and scratched out sacred and undeniable and substituted the words self-evident. So that it would read, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed with a certain inalienable rights, and among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of money. Where have you people been? You are correct. Happiness is the correct term. And so remember that to err is human, but to be paid for it is divine. I believe this applies to many financial advisors in today's world. And so it is a pleasure for me to join you this day and let me begin by saying that I am, for many years, been very fond of paper money. I was a printer in my lifetime, and I actually printed a pamphlet in favor of the printing of money because of the scarcity of gold and silver. And so, I happened to be the printer of the paper money, I understand today you call this term crony capitalism. Nevertheless, it was a very profitable enterprise on my behalf. And so it is with great honor that I have heard this rumor that my image is on the $100 bill. Pray tell, is there anyone here in the audience who has a $100 bill who can confirm this rumor? Is there anyone who has a $100 bill? Ma'am, you have a $100 bill? Let's see. Let's see if this is true. Would you like my key in return? Oh, my goodness. Isn't this fantastic? I just wanted to see if it's still true <laughs> that a fool and his money or her money is soon parted. Very good. Well, let me quote to you from Poor Richard's Almanac. One thing that I really enjoy doing is quoting myself. Now, for those of you who are engaged in insider trading, which I understand is quite popular in today's Wall Street, remember that three can keep a secret if two are dead. And a countryman between two lawyers is like a fish between two cats. Keep that in mind. And remember, creditors have better memories than debtors. 
And it's, it's easier to keep holidays than holy days. So, let me continue our discussion and give you some advice as a financial guru, I think is the term that you use. First of all, let me applaud the entrepreneurial spirit from the great French people who I loved. I was ambassador to France for eight years, and I learned to love the French people. And I, during this time, I came to the conclusion that it is incredible what it is incredible the quantity of good that a single man or woman can do if they put, they make a business out of it. Entrepreneurship is so important. I have seen advances in science and technology. It has been my lifelong ambition when I was alive to have lived two to three centuries later and to experience what you are experiencing. And one of the things that I learned is that you have made great advances in everything except taxation and debt. I understand the national debt in America is $21 trillion. But I learned a very important lesson. A virtuous and industrious people may be cheaply governed. Let me repeat that. A virtuous and industrious people may be cheaply governed. So by a show of hands, do we have cheap government? Indeed, what does that say about us as a people? The financial sage, the financial advice of a sage found in 1757, the way to wealth is as plain as the way to market is dependent on three words. Mark them well. Industry, frugality, and prudence. A man's industry and frugality will pay his debts and get him forward in the world. There is much revenue in economy. And no revenue is sufficient without it. But what do you say about the high cost of living? complaint of high taxes. The taxes are indeed very heavy, even in my time. But there are many other forms of taxation, are there not? We are taxed twice as much by our idleness, three times by our pride, and four times by our folly. I have always sought to have several sources of income. My houses to rent, and savings and bank accounts in several banking houses. I believe this is what you call diversified portfolio today. Spread your risk and avoid debt. In 1772, I was able to avoid the general wreck of credit. How? By not being in debt and investing in two banking houses who stood firm. I did not take risks. And I was fortunate enough not to suffer as a result. Remember this, in prosperous times, be modest and wise so you are prepared for the ill winds that may come your way. Great almsgiving never lessens any man's living. I will tell you a story. After the revolution, I was sent to represent France as ambassador. I was 70 years of age, and many thought that I was incapable of fulfilling this great work. But it turned out that the French people loved what I represented, the common man who had been to printer and had been made great scientific advances. And so they relied on me to raise funds for the American Revolution. And I raised funds time and time again. And there came a time 
when they wanted, when Congress demanded more money, wanted me to raise 25 million livres from the French king. And so I told him, I'm sick and tired of raising money. You don't realize how difficult it is to raise this kind of money when we are losing this war. Congress wrote back and said, nevertheless, Dr. Franklin, we are requiring you to go to the French foreign minister and the king and ask for 25 million livres. We are desperate. And so, my best diplomatic French, I wrote a letter to Bergen, the foreign minister, saying, if we do not win this war, you will see Britain dominate for the next 200 years. And they will not only dominate us, but they will dominate you. So we beg of you, if you will loan us an additional 25 million livres, we can succeed and win in this world. And I sent the letter away. No reply after a week. No reply after two weeks. Finally, I sent another letter to Virgin. I said, did you not get my letter? And he wrote back and he said, come, to, come and see me at Versailles and let us talk. I quickly took my carriage, went to Versailles, and was there within two hours. I walked into Virgin's office. Virgin had a grim look on his face. And he looked at me and he says, Dr. Franklin, we know that you are broke. We know that you will not even be able to pay the interest on the debt of additional funds that we give you. But not only that, but Dr. Franklin, we are broke. We in France have no money. And so I'm sorry, Dr. Franklin, we cannot loan you 25 million livres for your cause. And then he paused, and Bergen said, but Dr. Franklin, because of your love of the king of France, and your love of the French people, and because of the love the French people and the king, Louis XVI, has for you, the king has decided to loan you six million livres out of his own personal fortune. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call fundraising. And what a unique ability to be able to raise money. And we did able to raise money and win this great war, and we pledged our lives, our fortune, and our sacred honor to achieve this great independence that you and all are enjoying, and we celebrate every July 4th, and I hope we also celebrate Constitution Day on September 17th. And so, let me finally, one more word of wisdom. Beware of doom and gloomers, what I call the croakers. I saw in the public paper, papers frequent complaints of hard times, deadness of trade, and the scarcity of money. There were croakers in every country. One was an older gentleman who came by my home on Market Street and told me, sell everything, sell your property, sell your business. Philadelphia is in a sinking hole. I was quite depressed by the man's comments, but I did not act. And five years later, I had the pleasure to see this gentleman pay five times the money for the property that he eventually purchased. America has a great future. It is a great and happy country. And so, many of you know that at the end of the Constitutional Convention, I stood up and gave a talk in which I said, God, this I, this I have known, that God governs in the affairs of man. For have we not witnessed God's hand in providence in many instances so that we could win this war and achieve our independence? 
Now, all during these three months of negotiations and deliberations for the Constitution, I have been looking on the back of Ben Franklin, uh, of George Washington's chair. And on the chair is a half sun. And I have often asked myself the question, is it a rising sun or is it a falling sun representing the future of America? And I am happy to report that looking upon that chair and the Constitution of the United States, the law of the land that we have signed this day, that I am happy to report that I see a rising sun, not a setting sun for America. So it is with indeed a pleasure that I invite you to Philadelphia for this first money show. And let me just say that I am a mortal enemy to arbitrary government and unlimited power. I am naturally very jealous for the rights and liberties of my country and the least encroachment of these invaluable privileges are apt to make my blood boil. Now, many of these statements that I have given you this day, you may not have heard of before. And the reason is, is because I, in my older age, was asked by a number of people to complete my autobiography. This is the original autobiography that you can find in your bookstores today. I am pleased and honored that this book is still in print. But it ends in 1757 at the age of 51. So there's nothing in the autobiography, the original autobiography, about the Declaration of Independence, my eight years as ambassador, and the deliberations around the Constitution any of the quotes that I've given to you. So I've always wanted a descendant to complete my autobiography. And it is with great pleasure that my great, 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 great grandson, Mark Skousen, and his wife have completed the autobiography. I see it's three times longer than the original biography because a lot took place in my life. So I am honored to have that work done. And I'll give you one other quote from the completed autobiography, which is all in my words. I'm so pleased that they were able to, from my letters and my essays, put together the completed autobiography and talk about everything that has happened in my life. And here's another great quote that we could use today. The policy of America is commerce with all and war with none. So, I welcome you to Philadelphia. This is your opportunity to learn. And after all, is it not true that an investment in knowledge pays the best interest? So I salute you for coming to the Philadelphia Money Show and to learn from these great wise men and women. I look forward to meeting you. I would love be happy to have a what you term a photograph, I believe. I've also heard the term selfie. Not sure what that means, but I think I'm about to find out. So I will be in I will lead you into the ballroom, into the exhibit hall. We I am at 212. I will be autographing this book, both books, with a rare Franklin stamp. Do you know I, the stamp that I will be signing is a unique stamp. It's a stamp, it's the only stamp with George Washington and Ben Franklin on the very same stamp. 
So that will be part of the signature in memory of your coming to the very first Philadelphia Money Show. I will also be autographing copies of the Maxims of Wall Street, but this is written by Mark Skousen, not me. So with that, I thank you all. Welcome to Philadelphia. Philadelphia.